Hey guys, this is uh, a video about creating a similar game like uh, what I'm about to show you here. Um, this is a top-down racing game where you control your uh, car with, um, with your mouse pointer and you um, uh, drive and uh, drift around the track, uh, gaining points uh, for drifting. And um, uh, well, where I am right now is uh, also including multiplayer using Photon. Uh, which will not be covered in this uh, tutorial uh, and also uh, there's a small um, race result and stuff uh, which I'm well like I said not going to show you but I'm going to show you the basics how you can create uh, a game something like this uh, where you can build upon um, I'm planning to release this um, this game um, eventually um, I wonder if you like it and if you do uh, let me know in the comments and if you like the video you can um, like and subscribe uh, maybe we get a can get a, a broader audience then um, well yeah let's uh, let's get to it all right let's first get the basics done um, real quick uh, we're gonna set up some uh, some scene where we can work with before we uh, enter some detail so I'm going to add a plane for the floor and I'm going to add the cube for the player car. So let's rename this for car. Let's call this for ground. Uh, let's scale this ground uh, up a little bit to like uh, 20, 20. And let's also make a material folder. Let's add a material. Let's call this ground, duplicate it with control D, and let's call this car. Now let's make the car like uh, grayish, assign it to the, to the cube, and let's make the ground uh, something else. Not sure what, whatever you prefer, something like this. Uh, then of course the camera. Uh, we will be um, switch it like this. We're gonna do it uh, top down, and we are not going to use any wheel colliders. We're just going to use a rigid body to uh, for the for the quote physics. Um, and I want it to be like a, a very uh, different kind of game. Uh, at least I think it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, so yeah, let's scale the car to like a little bit uh, proportions, uh, which we uh, which we like. Now you have to make um, sure that you uh, get the correct um, uh, axis. So x will be the is the right, and z it will be forward. So we're gonna scale it in the length of the, of the z axis to make it uh, longer, something like this, and let's make it a little bit wider. 5.5 something like this yeah it should be a nice car for now uh, let's uh, scale it to 0.5 height and also level it up by 0.5 one better okay this is our beautiful car um, yeah now let's start uh, Let's start adding a script for it to control it. So let's uh, start with a folder uh, for our scripts. Uh, let's make a few uh, scripts here already. So one for a uh, for player car and one for the camera. Um, let's call this top-down camera. Um, what else do we need right now? Um, so let's open up the player car in your preferred um, coding environment. So the first thing we want to do, um, well, first let me try to explain what we are going to do. We're going to do a top-down racing game where we use the mouse pointer to control where the car is looking when we are driving. We're gonna apply throttle with the left mouse uh, for forward and the right mouse for going reversed. Now, we want to 
turn towards our mouse pointer. So therefore, we need to rotate our um, player. So let's start with that with that small part, part first. So let's make a, a private uh, method for this. Let's call this uh, set rotation point. Uh, let me I think you can see it a little bit better if I uh, scale uh, it up a little bit. So uh, first we want to have a ray um, for the cameras, uh, from the camera's main. And then we use the screen point to ray and it takes a it takes a factor three uh, position, uh, which will be our mouse uh, position. Uh, then we're gonna create a plane, new plane, uh, in the up for the normal, and uh, just gonna do zero in point. So this is simply a plane, and then we take a small um, distance here. So float distance, variable for it. Next we say if plane, and then we take, uh, create a raycast, stakes in the ray, and we take the distance out. Then we say factor three target equals to or is the uh, I'm sorry is the ray get point distance so we get a point somewhere along the line of a ray and then we say the direction equals to the target we just uh, had and then we subtract the transforms position. So this is the car's position. So we get a direction towards the point we want to rotate to. So let's take a, a rotation angle. And then we use the 8 and 10 2. Get an angle. And we use the direction X and the direction Z because we're not it's just uh, not 3D, so we just use the X and the Z. And then we're going to multiply this by the radiance to degrees. It's a value. And then we get a target rotation, uh, which we can use on the Y axis. So let's make a private uh, uh, quaternion. This will be our target rotation. Target rotation equals to the uh, which is uh, zero, and then with the rotation angle, and again zero. So this uh, sets our rotation. Mm -hmm. So if we take the update method, it we're gonna say set rotation point which creates the target rotation um, and then we could um, set rotation so transforms rotation equals to quaternion and then we're gonna lerp it at the, from a transforms current rotation towards the target rotation um, and then we need a apply a speed to it so let's uh, make it a turn speed which we don't have right now turn speed uh, times um, time time yeah. it's one it's one way to lerp it's not the way you should lerp but that's okay it's a lazy man's lerp I think uh, let's make a serialized field for the turn speed Speed. I'm not really sure what to add here right now, but let's make it five. Okay, now let's uh, move to uh, Unity then. So now let's first set up the camera uh, a little bit on top of the, uh, not a little bit, but uh, on top. So let's set the position all the way to zero. 
and let's rotate it down for 90 degrees. And now let's move it up on the Y. So we are getting on above it. 20. Okay. And now let's add the uh, player car script towards the, on the on the car uh, game object. Uh, it sets the turn speed to five. Um, let's hit play. And now you can see it's turning towards where we are want it to look. Cool. So um, rotation done. Let's move on to the camera. Let's open it up in. Uh, Let's open up the script then. So with the camera, um, we want to um, set it above the player. And also when we are driving, we want to move it slightly ahead of the direction of where we are going. Um, to have like a little effect based on the speed of, we are, uh, of which we are driving. And of course we want to damp the, uh, the following a little bit. So it doesn't be, it doesn't, uh, it isn't exactly on top of it and moves a laggy a little bit behind. So we need uh, like the, uh, let's call this observable. Um, let's serialize this. So we can assign it from the inspector. And then we need a few more fields, one for the uh, speed so how much we are ahead let's also make a follow damping and um, maybe one for the camera height you can set it in the inspector but uh, I think this is uh, is fun we are going to need a rigid body on the player um, so let's make a observable Rigid body. And then we say uh, observable. Observable rigid body, of course, equals to the observable at component body. So we have the rigid body. We need to add it to the uh, to the game object. And then in the update method, we are going to say if observable equals to null, return. So we don't want to update if there is no uh, observable. This is, is uh, it, when we are switching to a networking uh, a game, then it's, it's important because the camera probably is faster than, than the game object is being spawned. So uh, now we say that. Uh, let's see. Sorry, let's make a factor 3 target position is equals to the observable position. And then we're going to add uh, along the factor 3 up, so it's always up, uh, the camera height. So we set the height of the camera. And then we're going to say the observable rigid body. We take the velocity of the uh, rigid body and we uh, multiply this with the uh, hat speed. That is how much we are going to be in front of the, uh, the car. And then we say the position equals to Again, the lazy man's lay uh, verb transforms position towards the target position. Position, and we're gonna do it in follow damping time times time delta time. Okay, so this should be um, enough to follow our observable target and then go a little bit ahead of it okay let's um let's move on to the uh, car script now and uh, because now we need to uh, to drive and like i said we're going to use a rigid body we're not going to use uh, any uh, um uh wheel colliders or anything 
So we need to have um, a rigid body. And when we have the rigid body, we are going to make changes to the, we're going to apply forces to the rigid body in our, uh, in the fix up, in the fix update. Where you should run your uh, simulations. Now, then we can say, um, get an acceleration input for whatever we are accelerating. So we need a, f a float for the um, speed we want to drive. Or, well, maybe it's more the acceleration. Acceleration of the car, let's set it as some number. I'm not really sure what. Uh, what we need here right now and then we move back to the fixed up, uh, update and then we're going to say um, float acceleration input is equals to our current acceleration I'm sorry not current but our acceleration value and we're going to multiply this with our uh, input um, so we want to say uh, full throttle or uh, forward or backward. So we're going to say uh, input get mouse button. So we take the left mouse button. If this mouse button is uh, clicked, this is a, an immediate uh, if statement. We're going to say if we press 1. Um, let me show you uh, what we are doing if you don't exactly understand you should you could try this if input get mouse button zero then uh, this else if input get mouse button one uh, then we would say uh, this etc but we are going to do this in one uh, line we're going to say input get mouse button zero and then you add a question mark and then it takes two values the first one is if it's true whatever is in front of the uh, question mark and then we add uh, this one and everything that's the second uh, is when it's false yeah so then we can say if it's uh, if we press this button we're gonna say one otherwise we can say it's zero, but we don't want to know. We don't want to say zero. We want then do another test, which is input get mouse button one. If this is the case, we're gonna say it's minus one, and otherwise it will be zero. Okay, you understand? So this is what we are going to do right here. So we are going to multiply the acceleration. If we press the mouse button, left button, by 1. Uh, otherwise, if we press the right mouse button, it's going to be acceleration times uh, multiplied by minus 1. And otherwise, it will be 0. So if we don't press 1 uh, left or right, it's going to be 0. Yeah? And then we're going to multiply this by the time fixed delta time. There we go. That's all our acceleration input. Um, Next thing, we're going to use the uh, rigid body. Let's do it. So, rigid body, rigid body. Start method. Get a reference to it. Get component. Rigid body. Then we can say here, rigid body. Then we're going to add relative force on its uh, relative forward, so the forward of the car. And then we're going to say uh, multiply this by the acceleration input. There we go. So now we should be able to move uh, forward. Let's get rid of this. Okay, let's test this out and in uh, Unity. Let's first make some changes to the uh, camera. Let's set the uh, head speed to uh, 2 and follow damping to maybe 1. 
should be enough and then the car add the rigid body by uh, clicking add component and I probably don't see the small uh, uh, pop-up menu then now right now in the video so search for rigid body and just add it um, and we should change the interpolation option to uh, extrapolate I think to smooth it out let's give it a uh, oh wait the, uh, the acceleration is only 8 and because of the rigid body we need way more force to get it forward so we're gonna set it at like 1200 hit play now with the extrapolate, uh, extrapolate option on uh, you can still see a little bit jaggy let's move this to none and it's even worse so it should be extrapolate and uh, right now we are seeing the shaking probably because we are changing the transforms uh, rotation in the update method so let's um, uh, fix that in the update method in our player car script we see our uh, we see ourselves setting the rotation in the update method so let's uh, cut this out here and paste this below the uh, the add force and then we say the time uh, would be the fixed delta time and uh, that should do it let's go back to unity right now uh, give it a try and see what uh, how smooth we are right now there we go we are now pretty smooth whoops we are falling down let's run it again now what I'm noticing right now is that um, we are still running off screen with the ahead speed and such so we might tweak that a little bit uh, in the camera uh, let's see how it's like this maybe not perfect but um, you can change it any way you want uh, one more thing I'm noticing right now is that when you are uh, turning the car uh, I mean we are top down right now as you can see but when we are moving you can see the sides of the car a little bit because of the damping and this is not what I want uh, so I'm going to change the projection to the orthographic mode which uh, brings us down again because the height of the camera is not controlled anymore by the uh, y-axis of the camera but uh, by the size of the uh, projection uh, I'm sorry um, by the size of the camera so let's set this to like uh, maybe 25 but if we keep uh, this value in the top-down camera we can uh, control the sound effect from um, because the audio listener is on the camera and if we set the camera to something I mean if you change this around you won't see anything uh, happen beside of the change of the lightning uh, so we're gonna keep this at, uh, at at what we had and then you can s no longer see the sides of the car now you can uh, also because of that you could uh, see we are still not very well with the uh, camera but with the uh, following uh, let's set it to the graphic. We had it like 25. This was uh, 212, I think. And we probably want to tweak a little bit with the um, with the uh, rigid body values here for uh, for drag to slow us down a little bit more. So let's set this at 0.5. Then we are immediately slower, of course, because you know, we increase the drag. And maybe we should increase the this even lower 0 05 and increase the angular dra drag. So we come to a stop faster. Okay. Something like this, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um Oops, there we go below so we uh well let's let's keep the uh, drag and the angular drag for what it is right now we could decide to remove the gravity 
if you don't want to use any um, uh, uh, like jumps or anything and also let's see what I was about to say um, not really sure uh, let's uh, let's just keep it uh, like this oh yeah what I was about to say is that uh, you don't need to like have a 3d model of a car uh, if you're going to do it um, with a camera mode I have set up here like autographic because you don't see the sides of the car anyway uh, so you could use this very simple um, quad actually with the texture of a car um, but in this uh, video we are going to use a 3d car so you might be able to switch this to like perspective if you uh, prefer okay so next up is the uh, are the uh, skid marks um, which make uh, which will make our driving a little bit more uh, believing believable I mean um, we are not building this one ourselves uh, we are going to use unity skid marks it's on the github by uh, Nietzsche and you can find the link in the description below just drag the um, unity skid marks uh, folder from their asset folder in uh, directly into the uh, into our uh, uh, project I have added it right here now um, there we go now basically it works um, pretty easy um, we have a wheel skit which currently is based on the wheel collider so we are going to change uh, this but there will be like a controller which is uh, the skid marks script which we can call to create uh, skid marks so let's uh, start with creating an empty child for the, uh, uh, let's call this uh, skid marks. And let's add this script to it. Let's set this at uh, zero or two. And assign the material. And the material already has the, um, uh, the Photoshop file here, PSD assigned, which is uh, fair enough to use, good enough to use. And the, uh, skid marks shader is also used in the um, in the material well, let's get rid of the original wheel skid here uh, we don't need this one anymore so just delete it and uh, let's create a new script and uh, let's call this uh, wheel skid which will be our own wheel skid and uh, then we move to our car and then we are basically going to add some fake wheels uh, let's call this uh, front left and then we set this at the position of our cars or wh where the wheels should be like this uh, front right should be exactly the same position just on the uh, different x-axis so it will be exactly the same now I'll duplicate this one as well. Let's call this um, a rear right, and just move this back a little bit. We can change this later on. And rear left should be on the minus, something like this. Now we are going to add the wheel skit to all wheels, uh, so they all generate um, wheel skit, something like this. Yeah. Okay. Now let's open up the uh, uh, the script here, and let's start with adding some um, um, some values here, which we can change. So let's um, let's start with uh, a serializable field. Now wait, you can see the uh, model behavior is not getting compiled, uh, which is something that happens quite a lot. And sometimes it's happy to simply re uh, refresh the file and then you can see it adds the uh, the class and then it also adds the money behavior reference okay and it finds it I mean okay so if that happens just uh, select the file and hit refresh okay now let's add a serializable field uh, float for let's call this intensity modifier set us at 1.5 F to increase like the intensity of the um, of the skit 
and then um, we need uh, the skid marks controller so let's call the skid mark controller which we are going to assign uh, let's also need the uh, player car and later we're gonna add more stuff for the particle system for some smoke and stuff but that's uh, later now first let's get the uh, skid mark controller which would be find objective type uh, skid marks which is the component we just added um, the game object we just added and also the player car we're gonna use get component in parent so it will uh, find the player car component there we go now in the um, let's see in the late update so when everything has changed we want to make the um, at the uh, I mean sorry show the uh, the skit so then we could say uh, if this is the way the um, let's see the way uh, the skit mark controller works it has a, a skit ID uh, which is an integer let's set this as last skit ID set this to minus one you can get this from the original script as well uh, if you want uh, but then in the uh, last skit ID we're going to say is a skit mark controller add skit mark and then it takes uh, the position come on transform position it uh, takes the normal which is uh, transforms up we could use vector 3 up as well um, and then we have the intensity so the intensity would be like uh, a value from our car now because we are not using the um, wheel collider we are going to use a, a side slip mount uh, which we are going to get from the player car uh, let's uh, move to the player car let's make a script for that uh, private void set side slip and then we are going to use the find out the position from our from the previous frame and then calculate like the, the direction uh, on uh, the side which will be uh, a local movement of the x vector uh, x value so let's uh, get a factor 3 uh, last position of the car of the previous frame and then we can say uh, here factor 3 direction equals to transform position uh, minus the last position and then we can get the movement uh, factor 3 movement which equals to the transforms transform and then we use the uh, inverse transform direction uh, so we get it from world space to local space yeah and then we put in a direction so then we can get the uh, then we set the last position equals to the transforms position for the next frame so now movement uh, is the local movement of, uh, compared to the previous frame so if we make um, like a, a public uh, a variable here or value member how do you call it public float uh, side slip amount and uh, which we are going to get we're going to return side slip amount and let's make a local value for it there we go and then we can say here the set slip slip we can say the it's the side slip amount is the movement um let's just simply use the x component so this method returns it and in the update method we are going to set the side slip there we go so now back to the wheel skit uh, we could uh, get the intensity based on the side slip amount so let's say float intensity 
intensity one density equals to player car side slip amount so then we can say if the um, oh, let's make sure if the intensity is less than zero uh, if we move left or right uh, of course we want to make sure it's always a positive value so then we're going to say it equals to uh, minus intensity so it's always a positive value and then we can say uh, here would be the intensity times the multiplier we just made modifier uh, yeah and it also we need to add in the last index last kit index last kit id and that's how the the script works by probably uh, tying the um, um, the skits to, uh, together now we don't always want to skit so we could say if intensity uh, is greater than like some value maybe 0.2 then we want to start skidding uh, showing the skits show skits and otherwise we need to say last skit id equals to minus one which tells it to uh, to stop basically to stop skidding stop skits yeah um okay now let's head back to uh, to unity then again so after it has compiled the scripts without any errors uh, we can see that the intensity modifier has been added to the wheel skits here which is the same for uh, for all now let's see what happens if we start this there we go now you can see we are skidding when we are moving sideways. Now I need to fix the camera because this is kind of it's kind of difficult. There we go. Now we need to increase the you can see it just keeps on going. Oh, I remove the uh Gravity, that's it. How stupid of me. But now you can see it's like we are faking it, but, but Rigid Body is really good for uh, for this as well, for making like a simple car game from top down. And I think this works uh, very well. Uh, what you have right now is that we can turn whatever we want. Uh, and this is also what we are going to change. We only want to be able to turn when we are actually uh, are going forward. So that's the next thing we are going to uh, to add right now. And this fix is actually um, pretty simple. I mean, how we are going to do it, it's pretty simple. Um, because what we are going to do, we're going to limit the rotation uh, when we are driving at a certain speed. So let's... Um, uh, we need to get the, f the speed from our rigid body here. So let's say uh, float speed equals to the rigid body. Uh, rigid body. Then we take the velocity, magnitude. And let, uh, we need to divide this by some value, otherwise it will be too much. So probably 1000. Um, and then we can say here, transform rotation. Uh, we limit here the tons, turn speed. By multiplying this to um, the math f, and then we say we clamp it between uh, minus one and one, and this is based on the speed uh, value we have set here above minus one one. So yeah, let's uh, let's give this a try. So if we hit play right now, we shouldn't be able to move anymore. There you go. Now it's oh now it's re really too slow. So we need to increase that, or we could increase the turn speed. 
So let's uh, just see what happens if we change this to like a larger number. And it turns. Let's increase this even more to make it more reactive. So now, if we are driving at a higher speed, we can turn, but when we slow down, it turns like a little bit, a little bit slow. Okay. Um, this works. That's nice. Now, this part is optional if you uh, already have a track uh, where you want to drive on. Uh, if not, just follow along um, to create a, like, a, a nice track for you uh, and learn stuff from, from Blender, maybe. Um, let's first uh, get rid of uh, the default uh, stuff by hitting uh, A and hit X to delete it. Then hit uh, numpad 5 and numpad 7. And then you switch to like top or the graphic view. Uh, hit Shift C, then you will recenter the cursor and hit Shift A to add a plane, which you can find under mesh. And then we are going to hit uh, tab to go into edit mode and make a, sorry, press control R to make a cut. And then make it make the cut uh, in the middle. Um, just hit the right mouse button if you have moved it and then it will be exactly on the X axis here. And then we are going to remove the top half by hitting A then B for box select and then select it. Hit X and select delete vertices. Now move to the wrench icon here in the top right and add a modifier for the mirror. Now you won't see anything because by default it's mirrored on the x-axis but we are switching it to the y-axis. Yeah, So now everything we do here gets mirrored over there. Now let's show you like this. Yeah. Okay, now um, go out of edit mode and hit uh, shift A again. Uh, if you're not centered with the uh, uh, with with the uh, with this uh, thingy here, hit Shift C again to uh, to center it, and hit Shift A, select curve, and then we use the Bezier curve, which adds like a small curve. Hit Tab, and the Bezier curve. Uh, every point uh, consists of three points, three handles. Uh, the center one selects them all, so you can hit uh, G to grab, and hit R to rotate. Now it's important to be in top orthographic mode because otherwise if you will rotate you will also rotate around other axes and we just want to rotate on this side. So let's uh, make this one uh, the first one uh, like uh, flat here something like this and now make a track by simply um, extruding the points and uh, now I would advise you not to make it too difficult when you start out uh, because it simply is more work to refine it. Yeah? So if you hit uh, if you hit E from extrude, you get a new uh, point. And now you hit R to rotate it around, and you can see the part. Hit G to rotate it, uh, to grab it and move it around. And what I basically do, I just lay out uh, a, uh, a part of the track which I will want to use before I will um, start turning the stuff around. So then I would go like this. Really easy. You can make it as exciting if you as you want. There we go. And this one. Now also if you like uh, lengthen these parts you can control the corner a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, fun. Or if you want to adjust uh, the corners because uh, we want to have achieve a game where we can drift around the corners, so you probably want to tune those uh, corners a little bit. But I'm gonna keep it uh, like this. Hit tap to move out again, and then we are going to. Uh, well, first let me show you. If you go into uh, object mode, or I mean edit mode on this one, uh, you can make the track the way you want. Um, what I basically uh, do a lot is um, like make a small section for the sides so you can add um, a texture for uh, the curbs, curbstones, how you call them, curbs. Uh, but you can make them um, any way you want actually. But I'm going to add uh, edit over here. Now go back into object mode 
go back to the French and select add modifier and then we are going to use the array modifier and then it wants us to select uh, what kind of array do you want well we want to fit the curve it hardly fits always on my end but then you select the Bezier curve we just did now it has the length of the curve and also add a new modifier for the curve and the curve should be followed along the Bezier curve here you go it's a, a nice track not um, but you can see those those small edges um, because we all first thing we have a small track so what we can do is select the uh, curve and then we scale this like uh, hit S and then hit 5 on your numpad to scale it 5 times yeah. so we get like a better curve but still you can see those jagged edges I believe if you add um, more, some uh, cuts here like maybe two make sure they're in center you can see it's adding more curves but it's adding more um, um, vertices so uh, you've been warned about that uh, you need some uh, some optimizing later probably if you are going to use this a lot um, at high detail uh, but one tip I can give you, you can remove like vertices eventually on the straights and just keep them in the corners where you need the detail. Uh, but I'm going to keep it like this. Um, like I said, it doesn't fit the curve. Um, it hardly fits the curve on my end. Uh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. So I'm going to use a fixed count and see where we end up if we add one more. So something like this. Uh, and we are going to connect these. Uh, yep so now you can um, before you apply this this these modifiers you should test this out so if we just um, export this uh, let's hit uh, file export uh, FBX just um, well I'm gonna do it right here all this uh, track and I'm going to import this in uh, unity there we go so in Unity Open, we are simply going to drag the track in. Uh, let's uh, tidy it up a little bit by create a folder for it. Let's call this uh, Models. And let's also create a folder Tracks. There we go. Okay, now let's add this track to our uh, hierarchy. There it is, and still too, uh, it's still too small compared to our car, so we are going to scale it here. Let's scale this uh, four times or maybe still a little bit too small, six times, something like this. Fair enough. Now, a next thing we want to do is lower the ground a little bit or raise the track a little bit, whatever you prefer. Maybe 0.2. And also uh, we have the car, which is, uh, which has a rigid, uh, I'm sorry, which has a, uh, uh, gravity so it will always drop on the on the floor so um, we might raise the uh, you could raise the mesh a little bit of your uh, of your model um, but I'm gonna keep it like this for now so it's simply stuck into the ground um, you can lower it a little bit more maybe uh, zero 0.5 so like this and also we don't want to use any um, um, we don't want to cast any shadows because it's now casting shadows on the on the uh, on the plane, and we don't want that. So like this, and because we are top down, uh, you won't notice it at at all. Uh, let's scale up the uh, the plane. Forty forty should cover the track. No, eighty eighty. Then we should cover the track. There you go. And now we are simply going to test out how the um, track works. So let's hit uh, rotate the car around uh, on the y-axis, of course, minus 90. The blue arrow is our forward. Let's give this a try. If we hit run, oh, I haven't changed the I haven't changed the uh, rotation speed, so it should be 80. 
I'm not really sure if the yeah the skid marks are shown on the now you can see we are way too much uh drifting to the side so we need we need more um I believe more angular drag here so it turns it keeps our better uh it follows our turns better a little bit still not very well what you need to tweak this uh not really sure might we might need to increase the drag then Yeah, we need to increase the speed of the car too but i'm just gonna check it here first so let's set this at 2200 this is better there's our small end but we are just testing out the corners here it's pretty difficult but I think this pretty much uh, works the way I wanted it to work. So now, just assume you are happy with your uh, with your track layout. You should um, um, finish it up in in Blender. So let's uh, switch over to Blender again. And this isn't uh, an entirely uh, this isn't a tutorial which will cover Blender entirely. I'm just going to show some small uh, tricks, maybe. Uh, let's um, apply the um, the modifiers here, and we are going to apply them from button to, I'm sorry, from top to bottom. Apply, apply, apply. Now, if you hit tab, you can see all those um, vertices you made. So you might be able to remove like these here. So, for instance, if you want to um, um, switch to uh, to tap uh, to face view by control uh, control tap and if we are going to hit x you can, you can choose to dissolve the faces and then you can see that you made like one face out of four so this reduces uh, the number of vertices in your um, in your model um, but i'm not going to do that any any further um, now let's first uh, fix this part uh, quite easy uh, hit control tab to hit to vertex mode and we are going to uh, shift right click on four uh, vertices and hit f then you fill it yeah oops like this fixed yeah you could uh, like move it up a little bit hit uh, a b to box select and then like align them a little bit uh, also what's nice thing to uh, remember is always to hit uh, a hit uh, w and then always choose to remove the doubles uh, you can see i removed 640 vertices by removing doubles which are basically vertices which are sitting uh, on top of each other okay now one more thing i will show you um, if you want to make a texture for this uh, for the for the track you can hit uh, alt and and right click and then it will follow the path if you have not broken it up anything broken it up and if you hit shift alt and then right click on this one then it will also add this yeah so let's hit also uh, shift right click on this one so we have uh, selected the entire uh, inner track then we go to materials and then we hit the plus sign here and then we're gonna say new material let's double click this call this uh, track and then we are going to hit assign and then you can change the color a little bit now right now everything is assigned by the way so everything is black now also for this outer parts we are going to uh, alt right click shift alt right click whoops and now now you have to make sure that you are clicking like somewhere near the edge of the uh, near the edge so it will follow along that path let's make a new material uh whoops let's call this new let's call this uh curb curbs 
it a sign. Now you can see it's uh, it's white, so you can make it any color you want. Of course, I'm going to make this uh, whatever red. Now you could go to the corners, or, or uh, one more thing you could do is like assign a texture to this uh, material, uh, which consists of red white texture. Yeah, then you can simply uh, use these in the corner and remove these parts where you don't want them where you don't want the curves to show up off yeah but I'm going to keep it uh, just like this for uh, tutorial's sake okay now let's um, uh, export this again as the FBX now uh, oh yeah one more thing um, if you save this uh, exactly where you have um, uh, where you have your uh, 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 game then it will automatically override your uh, settings in in uh, I'm sorry in Unity, and then it will also um, take any property you change in Unity. So if we hit uh, we go to our uh, uh, game, and we go to models tracks, and we select this one, and we're gonna export it. And if you hit if you go back to Unity, it will uh, automat automatically make all the changes for you. So I switched uh, switched back to Unity, and you can see uh, it kept the uh, the size, and we see our great materials, <laughs> uh, which you can change here as well. Um, but there we go. We are going to test this one more time. And again, I forgot to change the uh, to to set the values for the rigid body. Uh, I thought we had like twenty two hundred here. Uh, angular drag to one maybe I'm not really sure anymore. 0.5. Let's see. You just need to fiddle around a little bit to get uh, some results. You uh, you think it's uh, fine to drive? There we go. Okay, this uh, this works. Uh, this works really nice. I think uh, we can con conclude our uh, our small. Um, uh, can we conclude it? No, no, no. We're not concluding it right now. We need some particles. We are going to add some particles, and then we are going to conclude the uh, the video and this uh, tutorial as well. So we are going to add some smoke when we are um, skidding. Yeah. So um, let's uh, go to our. Uh, wheels here and add some uh, a particle system so make sure you have selected all the wheels and then um, add a particle system to it now now we are going to uh, change this uh, look the way it uh, change the way it works uh, first we probably need to change the direction now we are not going to add any changes here uh, let's see. First, we want uh, the renderer to change to the material. And there's a default particle, which we are going to use. There you can see it. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is the one we are going to use. Um, we have a shape here. It has a speed. So if we remove the speed... Uh, let's see. We set this to zero. It will change. Uh, it will stay exactly here, and then also uh, maybe reduce the size of the cone. Do we need a cone? Doesn't really matter. Um, can we change this uh, radius? Of course. So let's make it a small radius. Point. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something like this. And let's just see what happens if we keep it on all the time. Uh, uh, nothing, because it moves along with our um, with our object. So what we want to do is we want to set the uh, simulation to world. And then it will stay there. Yeah. Then it will stay where it generates. Okay, and now we are simply going to increase the size over lifetime. 
Um, so if we switch to uh, size over lifetime, let's see what happens. You can see it starts; it it, it grows grows towards the uh, the end. So if we um, set the start size to like a five then it will grow to five but now we are going to change the uh, window here which for some reason I always seem to uh, here it is in the preview window now we want to have it uh, sooner at our um, At our bigger size something like this and now also we want to make sure we uh, reduce the duration a little bit maybe three so it will be faster and also we want to uh, change the color over lifetime because we want to fade it out eventually so um, I don't think you are seeing this gradient editor right now, uh, but if you hit, if you double click this one, you get a gradient editor to change the colors. Now hit the top right uh, node and change the alpha to zero, so it will fade out instead of um, disappearing. Yeah. So now you can see it's disappearing, but still it's really uh, it's uh, it's a little bit too uh, too slow for my taste. So I'm going to reduce the lifetime here to maybe three. Probably even more. Maybe one. Yeah, and let's increase the. Let's decrease the start color, uh, alpha. Let's lower this as well. So it's not that white. Now also, one more thing, uh, reduce the start size a little bit. Uh, no. Something like this should be uh, fair enough. Uh, well, you can change it any way you want. Okay, just uh, make sure you um, keep these values by uh, copying at least one. There you go. Hit stop and then apply these to uh, to it. Now we don't want to start it uh, running so we disable play on awake yeah. so now when we run it we don't see anything so we want to enable it when there's a certain amount of intensity of the skidding so let's open up the uh, wheel skid uh, script let's, um, let's open up the uh, wheel skid script and then we want to uh, make uh, reference to the uh, particle system uh, particle system let's call this a PS no not let's call this particle system and then the particle system is get component particle system and now um, we can say if the intensity is greater than whatever uh, we can say um, if we have a particle system or if this not equals no and it's not uh, and it's not playing we want to start playing play and when we are stopping we want to say if it's not null and only if it's playing we want to say stop now you could also choose to 
only do this when there is a certain amount of intensity. Um, but I'm going to keep this uh, like this for um, um, why it's not Uh, let's see. I think we're going to keep it like this and uh, see what happens. Okay, so let's head back to uh, to Unity. And hit, uh, let's hit play and see if it works. There we go. And there uh, we have some particle smoke. It's not uh, anything fancy. I'm sure you can do it uh, better, but this is just... Uh, to show you. Well, um, I think we conclude our uh, tutorial here right now. Uh, we have created a top-down shooter, uh, I'm sorry, top-down uh, racing game, uh, not using any wheel colliders, but simply using the rigid body and uh, a great uh, a great script and I think it's a great feeling uh, to drive a game like this. Um, I have uh, done this game before. Uh, it's not completely done, but uh, I th I'm thinking about releasing it, and uh, if you're interested, then just uh, let me know. If you like this video, hit uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.